Hey everybody, it's Pam at the Paper Outpost. Um, have you got scrapbook paper that's sort of sitting there not doing anything and you just thought maybe it's not your favorite paper? You'd like to jazz it up a little bit so you are excited to grab and use it? Well, today's that day for these pieces of paper. I just grabbed some uh, papers that are, this is like a traditional 12 by 12. I think this is a regular eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Um, just printed papers I'm probably not gonna use as is, but I thought I might just have some fun with them. So we're gonna throw the kitchen sink at these guys. Yes, yes we are. Um, okay, so the first thing we're gonna play with is maybe, um, we're gonna try some gelatos and just see how they do. So we're gonna work with different elements and just see how we can jazz up a paper. Here's a gelato I don't really use that much. It's called, uh, because I'm also using up some gelatos I don't really use that much. What color is this? Can I see it? Margarita. Okay, margarita. It's your day. Okay, um, there's really no right or wrong way to do this, so I'm just going to sort of do it. Uh, this It has the consistency of a lipstick, I would say. And you can, you can come here and just make some smooshies. Um, you can do some round smooshies. And they're, they're not necessarily going to stay in this shape because we're going to smudge them a little bit. So let's just see how it goes. All right. All right. I'm just doing random. I'm like, this is free flow, no thought. Um, release. Uh, okay. Bring in the create with reckless abandon and your warm little finger. If you can warm it up, if it's cold where you are and just do some smudging with these. They are kind of waxy and they do melt with the heat of your finger. Um, maybe if you're in a cold climate, you got to warm your hands up a little bit, but I'm just trying to obscure or alter the background terrain of this lovely piece of paper. There's nothing wrong with this paper. I just grabbed it because it was a dark background and I thought I wanted to show you, um, ways that you can play with a dark background. And then maybe we'll do a lighter background after this. And so we're just having fun and you're not limited to what colors. So use, yeah, have fun with your colors. Maybe this is a pretty, what is this? No, nope. uh, gelatos, watermelon. There's the name, watermelon, kind of a pinky. Um, I don't know, I think I'm gonna do some kind of weird connecting design here. Like there was actually thought behind this, but there really isn't. So there you go. <laughs> I don't know what this means, but I'm just, just playing, having fun, having no commitment to the outcome. I think that's the biggest thing. Have no commitment to the outcome. And if you get nervous, just tell yourself it's only paper. It's only paper. Okay. So, you know, if we mess it up, we can always start with a, another one. And even if we mess it up, it's probably some way we can use it because we're crafters and we just kind of think of things as we go. We could make punch, punch things out of it. We could fold it up, cut it, tear it, do lots of things. So don't judge too early on what your work is like. That's another big one. Let it evolve. Let it just uh, come to life on its own. Um, I am a little mindful and questioning myself here because I'm putting a waxy substance on here, so it may not allow other things to adhere as well. I don't know. We're just going to find out together. Here's a little Jane Davenport thing. What, what does she got in here? Okay, these are these are kind of like cream eyeshadows, but really, you and, and if you don't have all this stuff, you can use makeup and stuff like that, so just know that that is a possibility. Here's kind of like a pretty, I don't know how dry these are. They're a little old, but... Um, uh, just do a little flex here and there. No, not, I'm not, nothing is committal. Just sort of trying it if I like it. Um, and if we don't, we just we just carry on. I mean, everything is is adding to the feel of the picture. And then we can take these papers and do fun things with them. So you can maybe create a backstock or a backlog of papers that you actually do like. And wouldn't that be awesome? So it's not like you're buying a scrapbook, uh, scrap paper book, and you only like a couple of the designs. Take those designs you're not so excited about and just play with them. All right. And this one came out. Okay, that's like a little pinky. That would have been cute too, but we can always add it. But let's try some different things. And I don't know. I really do like using the old finger tool. I'm not going to smudge these too much. I kind of like the way they show up. And maybe we want to even amplify different colors even more. So I thought maybe I'd bring in this copper colored, this copper colored um, 
oh, you know, I have this fancy little tool now, my little palette knife. I'm looking all schmoozy. Um, I'll put on here. Look how schmoozy I am. All right, stick. <laughs> maybe I'm not as schmoozy as I hoped I would be. I will just maybe just put it down on the thing and use... Oh, there it went. Yeah, we're going to use finger tool. Okay, I got a little on here. Let me see. Okay, okay, so that definitely amps up the bright factor. And I'm going to use... There's like a chunk there that I'm just going to randomly go around here and borrow from. How about that? That's kind of cool. Okay, so that's how it's done. <laughs> doesn't matter if some spots are bigger than others. This is kind of cool, though. I love the way this copper color pops on this dark charcoal, blacky, uh, gray uh, background. Now, I'm not going to get too excited that this daub is bigger because this whole thing is probably going to get cut up at some point. I don't know, maybe. Not committing. Not committing to anything right now, Pam. Remember, you're not committing to anything. So just, yeah, have fun with it. And you can spread that till the cows come home. All right, I'll just try and spread them a little bit. See what that does. I'm trying different, just whirly techniques. You know, try it. Just have some fun with it. See where it takes you. Spread it out a little more. Make it thick. Keep it thick. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, that looks actually really pretty. I love the way that looks. Let me, let me get some more. <laughs> all right. So this is actually a handy little tool, palette knife, to scrape the edges. You get those little bits that are tough to get. Okay, I'm probably going to create the exact same situation. There it is. It fell on the paper. Now it came off the paper. It is over. Oh, you can't see it. It is now right there. I'm now going to retrieve this little piece, which is now all right there. I'm going to try now. Okay, put you back over here. Whoop! Okay. Well, now, didn't you just jump out of your little holder? Okay, back in you go. Okay, I got you. <laughs> you little devils here all over the place this morning. Okay. We can do the X design. That's kind of cute. I like that. And again, non-committal. Because this is just for the... Whoop, you're angled. Hang on, sorry. Oh, this is actually looking really pretty. I'm really liking this a lot better than I originally did when I came and sat down and looked at this paper. But pretty much so... Okay, you've tilted on me again. What are you doing? Okay, stay there. Now, I pretty much like anything when you put gilding on it, so it's it's almost hard to ruin. And this... Everybody asked, is this gilding wax-based stuff dry? And in my experience, yes. You put it on, it's kind of wet. Not wet, but it's waxy, and then it sort of dries as it goes. Okay, so that actually looks pretty cool. Well, gosh darn it. I'm I'm very excited about that. Um, let's see what else we could add. Okay, I'm going over here. I don't know. That's just so pretty. It just says fall to me. I don't know if I want to muck it up anymore. That looks awesome. Um, I think I'm just going to call that one done. I really like it. Okay, so one done. It wasn't that hard. It was actually quite fun. Gelatos and uh, gilding. All right, let's just grab one of these other ones. Okay. Oh, something fell. You know how it goes. All right, so I've got this one. Kind of a green um, gingham sort of design. Um, all right, so now let's maybe do something different. Okay, so I'm going to go I'm gonna go sacrilege here. I shouldn't do this, but but I'm I'm going to do it. Okay, so I am going to take my beloved coffee, and I am going to use it to make coffee rings on this. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Now, I think what I need is a separate piece of paper. Let's just borrow a book page. Um. I really don't know how to do this. Okay, I've got another cup here, which has a little, like, regular size coffee ring. This is my my Create with Reckless Abandon cup. I sh you should never do this with cups you drink out of, so there you go. But um, I'm going to pour a little bit of it here. And this is my demonstration cup, so I don't drink out of this, in case you're wondering. I'm just going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm going to try. Oh, it kind of does work. Yeah, I'm just looking for that coffee ring design. Maybe like a work desk or maybe a sewing desk that, you know, somebody used, but. Okay. 
they put their coffee cup down a thousand times. Okay, so now I need somewhere to put this because it's messy. Okay, got a cloth there. All right, so now this is pretty wet. So maybe I'm going to remove the excess with just a cloth. How about that? So it's somewhat wet dry as we're working with it. Or you could use a paper towel or something like that. You could take it aside to let it dry if you want to do that. And, and okay, I saw you tip. Okay, let me just move this down a little bit. It's a balancing act on this thing. All right, hang on. Let me put a little more without flicking it out again or turning it off. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we should get some nice coffee rings. We now have this, and this, maybe I'll just, like, so I can get some drips off of that. Okay, there was a little excess. I wonder how many pages that, oh, look at, we're, see? I've already coffee dyed several pages of book page, which I know I'll use and love. So there we go. So not a wasted effort if you're going through uh, books and using them up and you're crafting. Now let's see if I can pick this up without tearing it. It's a little wet, I know, I know. But um, let's go ahead and um, we'll just use something different. Hold on. Okay, I do have a bunch. I honestly do have a bunch of rubber stamps here, and I haven't sorted them out or put them all clean. Okay, so I, I want to do something with them. That's the goal. So maybe I'll take some and I'll stamp on here. Maybe it'll show. Um, what did I just load? Maybe black might be good here. Let me find my black. Here it is. Distress ink, black soot color. All right. Now, hang on. Let me get something to stamp this on because I would like. Where did I see it? I saw it. I'm right here. I haven't left the building. I don't have my regular mic on. Hold on. I did. There it is. You ever grab this? Oh, I hope this works. The spongy foam stuff that sometimes comes in packaging. It's really. I found it handy for stamping. I hope this works, I hope this works, um, as she says that, to stamp with it. So let's see if it works. There's my stamp. Okay, let's just try. Yeah, I would say that worked pretty well. Um, I'm happy with that relief. Sometimes my craft mat gets a little bumpy because I get glue and stuff stuck to it. So... Um, and you can do the same design multiple times, or you can do different designs. It's totally up to you. Uh, okay, it does seem to give a good relief when you have that little spongy background. I don't know why. I think it, it just does. Uh, it's kind of kind of cool. Um, put a few on these. And you can go with um, all different designs, like I said, or um, you can also... Okay. Okay. Oh, I, I'm starting to like it already. It's kind of looking cool. I'm a little, the, the vibrant intensity of it is a little in vibrant, vibrant intense for me. So I wonder if there's a way I can knock it down. I'll bet there is. It probably involves ink. Okay. I think that might be... Okay, I'm going to one more. What the heck? Just use it up. It's on here. Okay. Stop, Pam. Okay. So, all right. Good. Um... So to knock it down, oh, I think what I'm going to do, okay, I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to try it. I'm going in and I'm going bold, and I might not come home. This might just be where it all ends. I'm going to take this. It may be too noisy. I don't know, but we'll try. Um, I'm going to... Maybe I'm going to take the old tree stencil. This is a good background stencil. Now we're just going to try and cover the background. Now what should I use? I've already got black and green. I could use brown. Brown would be a nice muting, softening. But I could use a completely different, unexpected color. I could. Like a pink or a blue or a yellow. Oh my. So much to think about. How about a blue? I already got to get a different dauber. Hold on. I think it's this one. I'm not sure. This is Broken China. I'm going to try it. If it's all wonky donkey, I'll just keep covering it up until I like it. How about that? Okay. Here's the old paddle brush. This is dense uh, brush. And um, 
Uh, I originally got mine, I think, in TJ Maxx, but you can get these online anywhere. I think I have them in my Amazon shop. Try and remember to put a link. Um, but they're great for stenciling. And you can tape, like washi tape your stencil down if it wants to migrate on you. Or you can just sort of hold it in place if you're not too worried about the, the perfection of it. Um, and you can realign it if it hops. Okay, something's happening here. We're getting some colorage, which looks like exactly the same color that's on here. So I think I probably have some brown on here mixing with the blue. And it's giving me a green color. So I'm getting even more green. Yeah, great. Not what I was going for, but we'll we'll just take it from here and see. That's what happens when you don't clean your brushes. Okay, can we can we learn from Pam? That's what happens when you don't clean your brushes. Okay, let's just see what it all looks like. Oh, that's kind of cool. All right, okay, let's be honest. It's not blue. It is green. That's uh, pretty green. Okay, but I'm okay with that. That's all right. I've, actually, I'm starting to like this. Now I'm feeling like I just want to give it some subtle uh, little colors, like maybe these weird pairs. This is a weird pair. This Hello, weird pair. I don't know where I got it. I have no idea. No, probably a bag of used stamps at the thrift store or a box of used stamps from eBay. Okay, so now um, these things, I'm going to pretend almost like they're flowers. Okay, this could be a pear tree. I have now created a pear tree loaded with pears. But I want to give it like a little color fleck. Maybe I should bring back... Oh, should I use the... Now I'm getting excited. Should I go with gilding? Or should I go with like pinkish little color in there for a color break? And I'm thinking maybe pinkish. Where's my... Okay, I'm going to grab now. Being very bold. We know not what this is. It's some pink with... It's a gelato with no other naming on it. I don't know. I'm just going to... I don't know. We'll just try putting a little bit down randomly. It, it likes water, so it's okay to run over the watery spots. Just be careful not to tear your paper. But yes, if you have those papers that are just not speaking to you, don't, don't leave them there all alone in the dark, as you know we do, right? Yes, we pretend they're not there and they were not involved in our purchase because we only make useful purchases and we just do not discuss the rest with anybody. Well, here we're bringing sunlight on this. Let me zoom you down a little bit. And uh, should I finger smudge? You may want to. You may not want. Well, let's just see what happens. It will mute it down a little bit, but I do like the intensity of it. I don't know if I want to. Maybe I want to actually amp it up a little bit more. So that's muting down. Um, I'm going to amp it up a little bit more. Maybe make a bigger circle of, of color on each. Why not? It's my paper. It's only paper. And um, if we don't like it, we can either keep adding to it or start again. We can cut things out of it. We can crumple it up and throw it away and have a happy dance. Or we can um, just keep going. This is actually getting kind of pretty. So I would watch for your intrigue factor. When you're doodling along or, do you know, adding things, playing, watch for your intrigue factor. As soon as your intrigue factor pops, I would say, hey, step back. Take a look, go get a snack, go get a drink, come back and look at it again. If you're happy where it landed, then just leave it as is and carry on. So well, done, done. We have this paper that now I like and I would be excited to use. Okay, so, so far we have this one and we have this one. And this is just way too entirely fun. So if you don't want to have fun, don't do this. So yeah, step away, step away. All right, so here's this one. And um, these kind of fit in the frame well, so that's why I'm using these. But um, I think we're going to use some modeling paste on this one. It has a dark background. I have some white modeling paste. Let's just play with it. Oh, if you're wondering how to store your stencils, okay, I don't follow this because it's too cumbersome. But you can store them in these little plastic sleevey things that go in binders, which will keep them nice and separate and not connected with each other because sometimes they interweave with their little tiny parts when you leave them in a pile, as I do. I mean, you have to pull them apart, but this, very easy in and out. Okay, so let's put that down there. And where's the modeling paste? I had it out. I had it, so we were ready to go. Yep, totally ready to go. Don't see it anywhere. Why does that happen to me? I have no idea. Okay, go back in my modeling paste drawer. There it is. I put the modeling paste drawer back. I'm back. See how quickly I rectified that? Here is a faux 
credit card. Just these are good for um, modeling paste scraping tools if you if you don't have uh, um, whatever they use for this stuff normally. Um, but I'm just going to squeeze. So this is what modeling. This is my, the one I like, um, or this is the one I have, and I love the fact that it comes in the uh, squeeze tube because then you can just put out the amount you want. Sometimes you have to do the tap 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 because I'm getting down there. Okay. It's kind of like getting it out of a tube of toothpaste. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm gonna think I'm a little. I think I'm a little clogged here. Let me just unclog me cloggedness. It's not too hard to break the clog. It's pretty easy. Now, why do I say that? I should know better. <laughs> Don't say those things again. All right. Are you coming out? What's the guy with that? You did you dry on me? Did I leave you open? Ah, wow. It's coming out. All right, it's usually pretty easy to get out. It must have a, still must have a clog in there. I don't know. That's something there. All right. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah, now it is easier. Okay. All right, well, what for what was that was worth, let's just go with it. Here it is. Probably wipe this off because this stuff dries on stuff, and it's a little harder to get off easily than compared to when wet. So just deal with it now. You know what I mean? Just deal with it. It's done. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, let the fun begin. Um, you don't always have to do the whole stencil either, just so you know. Yeah, no, there's no rule. You could just do this dragonfly, which is kind of fun. Or just that, um, you know, pussy willow reeds there. What are, not pussy willow. Um, uh, cattail reeds, yeah. Get my kitties mixed up. <laughs> um... Well, looks like we need more. All right, we're going in again. Let's see if we can get some more out of here. I must be coming to the end. I have backup stuff, so, so don't worry. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is getting to the end. That's the problem. I need to get more. So I have this backup stuff. I got this at t t Tuesday morning, I think. So it was marked down, which is always great if you get to a Tuesday morning. Did they close? I think my Tuesday morning closed on me. What up with that? Um, okay, so this one is more of a, it's a pearlescent one. It's a white, which was handy. So sometimes you're going to find odd or unusual things there. Or, um, But if you go with basic white, it's very, it's, you can use it like with everything, so it's easy. But pearlescent is also pretty. And now we're doing some pearlescent. We're just going to run over a little pearlescenting with the rest of these. So everybody is uniform. Not that we have to be uniform, but... We're just playing. We're just playing. All right. All right, there we go. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, and we used everything in there. That was good. Now we peel this off. Oh, how pretty is that? I gotta... That's kind of cool, huh? So now I really do need to go rinse this off because once this stuff dries, it's a pain. So I'll be right back. Okay, next, I think what we'll do is we'll play with a little bit of gold paint. And again, I need a page or something. Um, all right, I'm just gonna use what I have. I'm already, this is already coffee dyed, so I'm gonna play with some gold paint on it, which maybe I can use it at some point. Okay, there's a little gold paint. What paint? It's the Amazon Basics. They make some pretty good supplies. Is it Amazon? No, it's Liquitex Basics, and it's in gold. Okay, so I'm gonna do a very, very simple Thing here, I'm going to take the end of a pencil, an eraser. Maybe I'll straighten this out a bit. Can you see that? Yeah. Oops, it's not so. It's almost like whipped cream, <clears throat> gold paint. Put one there in the middle. Um, I don't know if they'll stick on here, but then I thought I might just kind of randomly do some dots. And this might look like pollen in the wind. That's my theory. I'm just filling in, getting rid of some of the other colors in here. Not getting rid of, but masking, muting down, um, that kind of thing. Just going in there. And I think it's okay to go, like, dot right over some of the, the other things because it's blowing in the wind, so it might cover what's in front of your view. You know what I mean? So the things that are at the forefront of your view. <clears throat> okay. 
uh, random, I think, looks better than staggered evenly. So I'm going to, like, not think and just stamp. Well, maybe I'm going doing too many, but somebody stop me. Can you stop me? Ha, ha, you can't stop me. I'm over here. <laughs> I don't know. Um, just have fun with it. Remember, it's only paper. And we're just trying to, say, to make something we weren't that excited about to begin with and just turn it into something. All right, so now I would call those the bigger splotches. Now I'm just going to go for smaller splotches. Where did my splotch device go? Here it is. Mm. Here's my smaller splot. Now be you should cover your work area because this is going to go everywhere. What am I going to use? Paint? Maybe I'll use paint. Okay, let me find some paint. All right, I'm digging here. Um... I really want to use black for some reason. I don't know. Can I find a black paint? Hang on, I'm coming. Um, it's right. Okay, there we go. Here's some. Um, what color is this? Pavement. That wasn't bad. I was trying for black. That's what I pulled out of the drawer fast. So we're going to use pavement. And I'm just going to cut that. All right. Hopefully there's some in here. I don't know. It's looking a little scary. It feels a little dry. Might be. Oh, yep. We got some. Okay. Sometimes you don't know until you go in there. All right. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be a mess. Okay. First, I'm going to try the tap. There's like a blob on there. Okay. Nothing. Sippo. All right. Now we're going to go for the flick. Nothing. Oh, there we go. We got some. I was one hitting that hard enough. A couple. Hey, I don't. Maybe don't have enough paint. It's thick. Maybe that's what it is. It's thick. Okay, and it is going everywhere. I'm just going to say that. Oh, landed over there on the table. Really, should you not? You do this just willy nilly. You should. May add a little water to it. Okay. And we're talking. Thin that stuff up a little bit. There we go. Now we got some drops. This is not the, the most successful splatter technique, but it's mine. <laughs> I'm embracing it. And it's the way it goes today. That's the way it is sometimes. So, and you can keep crowding out the background more and more and more and bring into effect what is going on in the front. And then you can always, 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 let me see where my, huh. Um, I think I need my pencil sharpener. I'm going to grab my Stabilo. Maybe this is one step, step too far. I don't know, but I'm going for it. 8046. It needs a sharpen. I'm going to sharpen. With my little Derwent sharpener, which I love this sharpener. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's why. That's why I love that sharpener. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm just gonna maybe draw some dark lines beside some of these stems, trying not to poke too much into the, or get my fingers in the pa wet paint, which I always do, so what, who are we kidding? Just go for it. And I will bring a little water into this to blossom that line a little bit up oh, right in there yep yeah. and oh now nope, stuck yep yeah, okay it's not gonna happen neatly let's just not kid ourselves okay now let's get the q-tip because i need a little finesse in there when i'm in there doing this okay i've retrieved the q-tip i have hand cup <clears throat> water q-tip bloom Bloom. Bloom. Oh, it's so nice the way it does it. Bloom. It's just, uh, um, yeah, I got a little one here. I can do it. Um, emphasizing the stems a little bit. I just think it's kind of cool. You could even do, I don't even, didn't even draw them here, but I have enough on here. I could just, I really need to stay out of the black. Right? See, I'm trying to lay it. Okay, this is the way it goes sometimes, but you're just excited and you keep going. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to call that a day. So, 
Um, what I think I need to do is wipe this. Okay, I'm going to sit here and be a very good crafter. Clean the end of my pencil off all the mayhem. I know, the active act of Pam cleaning a tool. That's kind of funny. Now I have this. I don't want to waste all this. I think this is kind of pretty. So maybe I'm going to come along. Let me move this. Take this. Maybe I'm just going to smoosh it on here. Why not, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's kind of cool. What, what, what the heck? Why, why not spread it? Oh, that's kind of actually very cool. So, oh, if you have extra, just, just use it up. Mush it on another piece of paper. Mush it on another scrapbook piece of paper. Why didn't I think of that? I don't know. Because I, I didn't pull out more, so this wasn't what I'm working with. You can cover almost the whole page. Why not? Why not, right? This would be great collage paper. And it's got the text behind it, which is so cool. And, um... There's like no stopping the fun. It just keeps coming. So if that's what you feel like doing, I gotta wipe my desk. Because this paint stuff dries. Okay, I'm gonna let that set aside and dry. This is now another amazing piece of paper that something happened to. And um, now I'm gonna take this away and wipe this goldy stuff up fast. Okay, I'm just managing to spread it all over the desk, but that's okay. It's a craft desk. I'm gonna throw this out before I get that all over. I probably should wipe my hands. Somebody corral this woman. Okay, that's not bad. These baby wipes do a good job. When you get in there, you know, the, a, acrylic paint, if you get in there fast, it can be your friend. But boy, if you wait, yeah, you'll be singing a different story. Okay, so don't wait. Get in there and wipe it up fasty fast. You heard it here, folks. That's the best tip I can give you. Okay, so um, let's just quickly look at our repertoire. All right, let me back you out, so... I don't know if it's our repertoire, but this is our, this is what we made today in, in art class. <laughs> um, so very fun, just taking some papers that maybe weren't your groove initially, and then you made some groove papers. Just fun, easy, playful, and I'm going to go try and find Mr. Snuffles. Hold on. Okay, somebody has arrived on the scene. Hello, everybody. It's Sunshine. I have arrived on the scene. I see um, creativity and reckless abandon. And all is well, and I hope that's going on over at your place, too. So feel free and have a fun-filled day. Happy crafting. Sunshine out. Okay, thank you, Sunny. Uh, well wishes to all. And for those of you who don't know, I have um, a free monthly emailed newsletter. You can sign up for that. Link is down below in the description box. And um, you're going to get a free digital image, a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. And I like to print that out and tuck it into the beginning of my junk journals. Um, also, uh, you can change the font or the text or use it with my blessings as is. Um, my videos co now come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My I have an um, Etsy shop where I sell fundals, which are collections of old and interesting paper like antique ledger, checks, receipts, postcards, black and white photos, music sheets, dictionary pages, and a whole plethora of vintage book pages and lots of fun surprises in there. 100 plus pieces, free priority mail shipping is included. It's called a fundal with an F. I also have journals and bundles and kits when available. So sometimes I'll do a video um, flip through or demo, or sometimes I'll just pop them into my uh, Etsy shop. So feel free to come on by and take a peek. And also um, I have a, I sell digi kits, which are printable, downloadable images. If you don't want to fuss muss too much and you just want to play and have fun, um, you can buy, uh, there come five pages each. You can print them out at home or I will print them for you in batches of 10 digi kits. That will give you 50 printed pages on nice lightweight cards, cardstock. Um, and that is also, uh, includes free priority mail shipping for that. Um, I have an Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies. I try and put links for the things that I use if I can find them in my shop. Um, that does help my shop, but you don't pay more for the items for using my links. So thank you very much for your support. And also I have um, a merchandise shop. Okay, this do not put anything that you're going to drink into a cup that you're using for crafting. But if you like the phrase create with reckless abandon um, or everything is a craft supply without uh, before proven otherwise, you can get that on a t-shirt, sweatshirt, zip tote, mug tote, or water bottle. And um, 
You can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos. And remember, most of all, the fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.